It's the probable cause of HIV. And it's happening today as people in Asia come down with bird flu. The potential for human catastrophe is frightening. So it's no wonder the New Zealand government put a stop to Professor Bob Elliott after he began injecting pig cells into Kiwi diabetes patients. But as you'll see, Bob is undaunted. He won't be held back. Karen McCarthy with this report. Animal spare parts, it's trailblazing medical technology and a touchy subject with fears of what could happen if an animal virus was to infect a human host. Diseases have crossed species before. We've seen it this last week with a deadly bird flu said to be threatening millions across Asia. But how likely is it that researchers seeking to save lives could inadvertently unleash an epidemic. There's not been one single instance where any animal whatsoever has become infected with pig retrovirus. None whatsoever. Nothing in science is about certainty. There's no certainty either for those who suffer from diabetes. Imagine a life where everything you eat and when, every burst of energy, any surge of emotion even, could put you at risk, at worst, of slipping into a coma. Seven-year-old Sophie Foster was just three when she was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. To survive, she requires daily doses of artificial insulin. She's become accustomed to pricking her finger for blood tests before every meal, meticulously counting the carbohydrates in everything she eats, under the ever-watchful eye of her mother. For Sophie, a part of her body died, and that part of her body regulates her energy levels. To have that back so that she could have energy whenever she needs energy and have it on tap just to be there to use when she wants to would be like a whole new life for us. It would be absolutely, definitely, it would be a miracle. What she's talking about is a new therapy, which, if it's approved, would be a revolution in treating diabetes. Nobody's using the word cure quite yet, and there have been plenty of people sounding the alarm about it. Its name is xenotransplantation, putting animal cells into humans. It's controversial and pioneering medical research, and the charge is being led right here at this laboratory complex in the industrial back blocks of South Auckland by Professor Bob Elliott. We start the whole thing off here. We're still the only ones who have actually transplanted any humans with uh, pig insulin producing cells and the only got people some in the results. world. And the only people in the world. Nicole Spragan, Nikki Taylor, Peter Thompson. New Zealanders who made medical history when they had pig cells transplanted into their bodies, each a long-time patient of Bob Elliott. The prof, as he's known, is medical director of Living Cell Technologies, formerly Diatrans. Elliott set up the biotech company seven years ago, continuing his life's work trying to find ways to beat diabetes. His company has quietly become one of the major players in the world in the field of transplanting cells from pigs to people. We knew that the severe form of diabetes is caused by the cells which make insulin dying out. There aren't cells there. Uh, so a very simple-minded way of approaching this is to replace those cells. Uh, they're very specialised little cells and they're very hard to get out of the human body. So from a very early stage, we said, if we're going to use cells, they've got to come from animals. It was a massive leap of faith that it would work and that it would be safe. After some successful animal experiments, the professor launched into human trials. How brave were those first souls? Well, I think the, the very first uh, girl, uh, uh, Nicole, was immensely brave. Um, this was going into totally unknown territory. I got... Possibly what I realistically expected from it was a little bit, but not a lot, but enough to help, help Prof out. Nicole was the first, 29 now, married, and the mother of a little girl, Jasmine, 
She was just eight when she was diagnosed as having diabetes, 16 when she got the transplant, fully aware of the risks. I knew I could possibly get sick or have consequences from these cells not being human cells. But that was a risk you were willing to take? Yeah, I had diabetes already. I couldn't, you know, in my eyes at that point in my life, things couldn't probably get much worse. <laughs> the results were short-lived. The pig cells died off after only a couple of hours in her body. No change in her condition. In a dream world, maybe, at the back of my mind, I thought, oh, what if it works? But I really wasn't expecting it to be a miracle cure because I knew I was the first. As someone who's diagnosed with diabetes at age three, things can get pretty tricky once you get um, in your 30s. And I certainly was someone, and I am someone, that wants to live a very long, very full life. And um, that's really why we got involved. Lawyer Nikki Taylor, a diabetic at three, 16 when she had the transplant. There followed the best three months health of her life. It was just a whole lot more energy, a whole lot more feeling of well-being. My blood sugars were very, very controlled, which means the, um, the highs and lows were really knocked out. And what that really means is um, j just that you can live a much more normal life. Mm. Peter Thompson is perhaps one of the fittest diabetics you'll ever meet. A black belt in karate and taekwondo, he does his utmost not to let the condition stand in his way. The 27-year-old has been diabetic since he was nine. Fifteen when he got the pig cells, his results, again although temporary, were even more encouraging. For about six weeks I was off insulin. Um, and, uh, had, off, off altogether? Yeah, yeah. There were times when I needed a little bit, but, uh, but not too bad. Uh, my blood sugars were, were pretty much as what a normal person would expect. And um, just the freedom, I guess, the freedom from it, just even momentarily, was wonderful. After Peter came two adult patients who'd had severe diabetes for many years. This is the company's own video footage of one of the procedures. It's laparoscopic surgery. The pig cells are injected into the abdomen. But these cells featured the professor's next breakthrough, a special coating which made them invisible to the body's immune system. The patients showed only a partial response, but because of the coating, the cells thrived, producing insulin for over a year. And how long do the cells survive? Well, we have um, some evidence that they will survive for many years. Elliot and his team were thrilled. They knew they were on the right track. But no sooner had he sensed triumph, there came a major setback. A British virologist sounded a chilling warning about the possibility of pig retroviruses crossing the species barrier and spreading through the population. Suddenly, the spectre of AIDS loomed large. When we saw that, we stopped immediately. This was uh, something that was unexpected. And until that was clarified what was going on, did that have anything to do with what we were doing, we stopped. Here in New Zealand, the Director General of Health said she could not dismiss the possibility that an HIV-like retrovirus might infect human patients. As a result, the government banned any further human trials, imposing a three-year moratorium that expires in June. Now, to me, the evidence is in now that this was uh, alarming initially, but the evidence is now that it is, just doesn't occur. Uh, and the chances that it would occur are so remote now that we're talking of things like major asteroids hitting the Earth. Extremely unlikely, but... Again, the problem is what level of extreme unlikelihood is acceptable to the public. That's the dilemma. Professor Peter Gluckman is one of our most eminent research scientists. He's keeping a wary eye on xenotransplantation. I don't have the expertise myself to judge on the safety issue. And I believe that, that if we are serious about xenotransplantation, we really need to bring the real experts together 
who do understand the issues to advise us on whether there's risk or not. At the moment, we're working off low-level dialogue on what is a very sophisticated matter. It's an imaginary risk. It's not even a theoretical risk now. It's an imaginary risk against a very likely high benefit. Nothing in science is about certainty. One of the most mis- understandings about science is people think science creates certainty. It never does. Frustrated by the bureaucrats, his human trials on hold, Elliot's been busy offshore this last couple of years, setting up a... and just recently completing successful trials on diabetic monkeys in Singapore. But interestingly, the core of research is still carried out here. Head office in Australia. Experts from 10 nations work at the Auckland facility. It's here the pig cells are extracted, coated and readied for transplant. I would much prefer to do the trials here than anywhere else. And that would mean that New Zealand would be definitely in the forefront. I have great confidence this is going to work. Good girl! girl. The Kiwi company has another crucial edge over its competitors in its source of raw material, the pigs themselves. 60 Minutes was given rare access to the animals at one of the two facilities where they're kept. Dinner time. Good girl. They are, we're told in terms of disease, the cleanest pigs in the world. The pigs come from a stock that was uh, abandoned on uh, the remote island in the Auckland Island group 200 years ago and have been in splendid isolation ever since. It's not, the island's not inhabited, never has been inhabited by man, and the only other animals down there are birds and seals. And during this 200 years of isolation, they've become remarkably free of disease. These are breeding stock, carefully tended to provide the litters of healthy piglets, which, at a week old, make their contribution to medical science. It's in this room the insulin-producing pancreatic cells are taken from the piglets under general anaesthetic in a full surgical operation. Their lives then end in the quest to save others. We've always used animals uh, for one way or another. Uh, Most people use them for food. um, And... To me, there is less objection to using animals for a source of cells to treat serious human disease than there is to kill them so that you can have a a pork chop or a um, bacon with your eggs in the morning. With no guarantee he'll be able to resume human trials in this country, Elliot is already seeking FDA approval to conduct human trials in the United States. A green light from the Americans would be hugely significant. If you do get FDA approval for clinical trials, how swiftly could things move? Uh, If the results were startling, uh, it would be a very accelerated procedure. Uh, Some people in Canada did something similar, not the same as this. They used immunosuppressant drugs and they used human cells. That went from being a research procedure to being offered as a treatment within 12 months. And that's just the beginning, according to the prof. His animal experiments have thrown up another extraordinary possibility. That transplanted pigs' brain cells like these could potentially treat deadly human brain diseases. If you've ever seen a case of Huntington's disease or motor neurone disease, or even somebody who's had a bad stroke uh, for which you really can't do a great deal, this is, this is enormously exciting stuff uh, and holds very high promise. We're not as far along as we was with the diabetes project, but I, I wouldn't be surprised to see at least some of these Um, projects coming to fruition towards the end of this year or early next year. (laughs) In the meantime, though, all eyes are on the diabetes trials, 
If they are approved and work, the treatment will transform the lives of diabetics like young Sophie. Patients and specialists around the world are watching Elliot's progress with guarded interest, waiting for the American decision. But the prof's earliest guinea pigs have no doubts. They say they jump at the chance to do it again. I mean, I'm desperate, sure, for a cure. Totally. And why wouldn't I be? I mean, diabetes is most likely going to kill me anyway, so uh, anything I can do to mitigate that is, is worthwhile.